Well, hello there, boys and girls. You have landed on the Bubba Roundtree Outdoors channel. I'm your host, Wade Rush. The good folks over at Zavrog Bullet Molds sent me three of their slug molds to take a look at. So, let's take a look at them. Well, boys, today we're going to take a look at the very popular Zavrog Zevra Boy. I got the um, I got the newer, updated version with the two pins. The updated version is supposed to be a little more center balanced. The updated Zevra Boy mold that I got them to send me comes with the segmented pin that everybody is so familiar with and with the straight hollow point pin. Not segmented, just makes a big monster hollow point slug. As you see, I've been practicing with the segmented Zebra Boy. As a matter of fact, I molded up some that I actually took a big old nanny with earlier in the 2020 hunting season that I molded out of this mold. Now you see, I had to hit it with graphite to get it not to stick on me. They they suggest you clean it up as usual, just use some brake cleaner or some carburetor cleaner, clean the machining oils off of them, and see if it'll work just cleaned up like that. Well, the pin didn't want to come out like it should for me, so I had to hit it with some graphite. So be it. If I got to hit it with some graphite to make it work right, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start out with the uh, very popular segmented, the, big, the four segmented uh, setup, and let's mold up a few of these things. Okay, fellas, getting your mold hot is going to be important for this thing to perform right. We have a beautiful um, midwinter's day here in the Midlands of South Carolina. It is 55 degrees out here. Bluebird sky, sun shining while the middle of the country is in the deep freeze. We over here on the east coast, at least in the south here on the east coast, are having some beautiful weather at the moment. Water's coming over the dam by like a couple of foot and all that now with all the flooding, but that's not affecting us here today. All right, now... I have not preheated this mold. Big pieces of lead. It don't take long to heat this thing up whenever we're pouring an ounce and a quarter of lead into a mold. All right, let's see. First pour, let's see how this works out. All right, probably going to need the bopper. Looks like it's going to fall right off, and it did. It's not, it's not perfect, boys. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw it back, just like a coal fish. And let's let's do another one. Knocking my sprue all the way across the table. It's not bad. But see, you grab it. You grab your uh, your projector right here with the mold and pull it out. And this one, we're getting there, but it's still a little bit wrinkled up. Mold is getting hot. Let's 
see if I can keep that. There, we finally kept the sprue here. Still a little wrinkled up. It's not perfect. Like I said, boys, it's cold out here. For us, it's cold. Now, I say Texas is cold. 55 degrees, I guess I wouldn't call that cold. Now, I got the, mold, the alloy screaming hot, between 7 and 8 here on the leap hots. They still pretty wrinkled up. I'm just going to keep doing this, boys, until I start getting them, and I'll tell you how many times it took me out here in this cold weather. Would probably work okay, but both of these pots are still humming. They ain't cycled off yet. The alloy may not be hot enough yet. Probably functional, but I'm waiting for them perfect. Yeah, it's getting hotter now. See. Still dimpled up. My guess is, boys, I started a little bit too soon. The alloy evidently is not hot enough. Stand by till the alloy is hot enough. Boys, it's been 10, 11 times. I started to get some that were kind of functional. band ain't joined at the top that one which now I had to get all my cameras going again so that don't surprise me it took me a minute or so to get everything running so that allowed the mold to cool off Probably functional. <laughs> Looks like I might have got a little impatient out here to get things going for the alloys and all that. It really come up to temperature. Yeah, that one will definitely be functional. Still not complete. The band is not still not complete on the top, but probably functional. Probably work out really good when it's 100 degrees outside. But my office is out here in the yard. Seems that that top band is the toughest thing to get to get formed. It is for me anyway. Mold seems to be getting pretty dang hot.
All right, let's try to mold up some of the regular old hollow points. We just took the segmented pin out and put the hollow point pin in for the zebra boy. That one looks pretty good, right out the gate. Look at that monster. Yeah, that's regular hollow points just working like a dream. I guess the more complicated it is, like with the segments and all that, the more snags you can run into. Yeah, those are working like a dream. The bands, upper, mid, and lower bands are all looking good. And yes, boys, I'm using my lead wheel weight alloy for the slugs as well. because uh, And I let them air dry, and it does make a difference. It leaves them a little softer whenever you air dry them. And when you got when you got functioning projectiles, mushrooming or segmented, projectiles, you want them a little bit softer. Shoot. Man, those are looking great. That's just your bolt hole for you to put your number four or number six wood screw. That's working like a dream, man. I'm loving that. Those big hollow points look sick. I already know what that segmented round will do. That thing was designed to take down a darn brown bear. Boys over there in Russia, don't mess around when we're talking about big game. Shoot. That's looking great. I don't know if it had much to do with the mold getting hot enough. Let's put the uh, put the segmented pin back in now that we got it running great and see if that makes a difference. Now that pin's gonna be cold. Mold is still dang hot. Yep, mold is still dang hot. It's not bad. Try one more. And here in just a minute, we're going to do what all you guys are waiting on. We're going to take them down to the range and shoot them. Let's take the zebra boy rounds down to the range and see how they shoot. Stand by. Okay, boys, now we're talking to segmented Zavrog zebra boy. New primed Chidite. Hole from ballistic products. Color doesn't matter. I think I might have two white and one green here. But uh, we have 
34 grains of long shot under an X12X seal. You can use a PT1220 wide base or a brush wide, virtually same dimensions, and the Zevrog or Zevra Boy segmented bolted to the wide. All right, let's shoot a three shot group. This is the one I killed that old big nanny with. Well, boys, you see why I was confident with that load, even out to 50, 60 yards, to where I was confident we could take a deer with that setup. Less than 1,000 foot per second, but I'm gonna, uh, I'll show you what it did to that, uh, to that big nanny um, back in October. All four segments came apart. That thing's designed to kill a bear. It'll flat do it on a 125 pound doe too. to show you I don't know how well it can see it there's the four petals oh it's daggum flash there's the four petals out of the dough they were all in the skin on the exit wound okay fellas we're gonna move on to the zebra boy not the segmented and this um, this is just the big hollow point weighs one and a quarter ounces this is the value hole Estate or Rio value hole. We got actually got a Rio primer installed this time 36 a long shot X12X seal um, under a brush wide it's bolted down on a brush wide and we have a uh, 20 gauge overshot card between the uh, The slug and the brush wide I'll show you I'll have demonstrated that at the bench but I guess these are the Zebra Boy hollow points, not segmented. That's another big bullet. And in the second three shot group, I right, look at that tiny little, this was a two and three quarter inch that I've cut back even shorter. And we've got a, uh, this is the Remington cut, cut back to almost uh, one and three quarter inches. We got a 209A, Federal 209A primer, 30 grains of long shot. Just a brush wad with the, uh, Zebra Boy hollow point bolted down on top of the brush wide. That's as simple as it is, and that's as long as it is using a small grain powder. All right. straight over the chronograph. Hopefully the next two will. You want me to reset it? it? Read, hold on, it read 322, then it didn't move. It's, it acts like it's locked up. So I'll turn it off and restart it. It was bracketed, so it was on. Yeah, it was sitting on. The it must not have gone far enough. All right. <laughs> so if we can get one to read, then we at least know what the other two are probably pretty close to. T 
1044. <clears throat> that one dead center bowl and the other two hit the same hole. <clears throat> well, let's shoot them little super shorties that we got and uh, out of the same Zebra Boy hollow point and see how they do. Right, fellas. Usually, them little short shells still run fine in the automatic. Did you start the chrono? chrono yeah, we got okay. it on. I had uh, I brought the 870, but if this one it's shooting the automatic, it don't kick you as bad. Boy, you can hear them things hitting that board hard, son. 983. And see, the cool thing about those small rounds is even in a shotgun where you can't normally get but five rounds, in the shotgun you can get like seven of those short rounds in there. Be great for home defense. That ain't bad for them little short rounds, is it, boys? They ran them automatic. Same group, two and a half, three inch group for everything we've shot so far. Well, hold on, Wade, for God's sakes. At least you're going to show us how to make those shorty slugs, ain't you? That's what everybody was screaming about at this point, I reckon. Well, of course I am. Y'all hang on. Fellas, the spinning trim from Ballistic Products is really going to be your friend when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. Some of these shorties that I'm shooting here started out at three and a half inch. Blow the crimp out of it, cut it back to a three inch. Blow the crimp out of it, cut it back to two and three quarter inch. Blow the crimp out of it and cut it back further and further and further till we get to where we just can't use it anymore. Well, we're at a two and three quarter inch that uh, that I cut back even further. Look here, this is the this is one of the rounds I shot at the range. See the notes and all that on it. This is one of the rounds, the short one of the shorty rounds, one of the last ones I shot at the range. Look at that. This can be loaded again. Matter of fact, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and get 30 grains of long shot coming out of the, uh, the Hornady. And uh, so I was throwing just under a thousand foot per second with an ounce and a quarter slug, you know, 525 to 535 grains. Here, I just got a Remington two and three quarter inch. This is the, the eight fold crimp. Probably a pheasant round, but I'm going to use this to demonstrate. Regular two and three quarter inch Remington. I've got the spinning trim already adjusted to just take the crimp out of the, uh, out of the two and three quarter inch. I roll it forward. It gives me a little bit more control and usually just makes a prettier cut for me. See, we just cut the crimp again out of the two and three quarter inch round. Now, this thing's getting pretty short now. And as a matter of fact, here's one of the Estate Rio brand new hulls that we shot down there. Uh, probably not, wouldn't have to cut the crimp out of it, but I'm going to, just a demo. I've already decapped it and resized it. So what we're going to do, slide it up on here like this, and cut the crimp out of it. Now, we're ready to load them and turn them into shorties. Now, if you punch the primer out of a Rio or a State, these are a couple of the biggest primers out there. You want to go back with either a Rio or a Nobel Sport primer if you punch out the Rio or Estate and you're using them again. You're going to find that everything else pretty much is not going to stay. So we popped a new Rio primer here in this shorty hole that we cut back to Estate or which is Rio. Well, while I'm sitting here guys, check out this parang. 
subscriber sent it to me. Got here today. This is this thing is a piece of art, guys. Hand handmade parang. Check that out. Rod, you are gifted, buddy. This thing is razor blade sharp from the back to the tip. He said down here in the south, it looked like we went through a lot of bushes and might need something like this right here. Forged it from the leaf spring of a truck. Yeah, forged it from the leaf spring of a truck. This is B.A. Rod, really appreciate this. I had to show that to you guys. I had just been, I've been like a little kid. All right. Let's get these shorties put together. We're using the um, the Zebra Boy, Zebra, the Zebra Boy Hollow Point. Look at that monster. Not segmented. Here's a here's a Zebra Boy that I powder coated. That is uh, the four segments. These things are sick. But uh. Okay, so I've got, what I've got here is one of the hulls that I fired down there at the range. Well, actually, two hulls that I fired down there at the range in the video that we've already cut back. Resize, reprimed. And we got the new one that I just decapped. Uh, make sure, I believe it had already been resized. It had. And, uh. We need a Federal 209A. Man, I got stuff stuffed up under the bench here. Thank God I got a little bit of stuff. I do have a little bit left. Not a lot. We're going to go ahead and get this. with a Federal 209A primer. We got, we'll go ahead and load the new one first. I'm gonna show you how I do it, fellas. We, uh, you're gonna need a number four, three quarter inch wood screw. Uh, you get these from Walmart for like 75, 80 cent dollar for a small thing of number four, three quarter inch wood screws. Sometimes number six work also. But uh, we're going to put in 30 grains of long shot. Okay, we're just using a regular old brush wad. Hopefully y'all can, can see what we're doing here. I'll try to get you a closer view. All right, hopefully y'all be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna set this to the side. You see, I've already got my ice pick here, homemade ice pick stuck through three, right through the center of three 20 gauge overshot cards. Okay, you may need these. Using the brush wide sometimes, I do. Leon, you know a little bit about that, don't you brother? Sometimes you just do. The brush wads sitting right here, I've already punched a pilot hole Hopefully the camera will focus in on that. I've already punched a pilot hole in two of them with my ice pick here. On the brush wads, it may not be on both sides. See this side, there's no little dip. But look here, on this side, y'all see that little dimple dead center of the wad? That helps. That kind of works as a guide. So I set them right here, go right dead center of that dip. And it don't take a lot of pressure with this ice pick. See that? I've already knocked a hole in it. We got us a we got us a guide hole here now. And trust me boys, you want a guide hole in, in this stuff. Let me get one of these overshot cards. Because you may or may not need it. See if you look in the brush wide, you see there's a little cavity there. Those ends can be kind of high. And your your zebra boy 
see here may not want to sit all the way flat down in that little cavity there so we tuck this 20 gauge overshot card fits perfect in that rascal right there and then the slug sits perfect right on the top see now let me grab one of these one of these number four wood screws here that's what the hole in the slug is for let me grab my little screwdriver over here now see if I can get this thing back where you can see it and get this thing started it should go with the pilot hole it'll go through everything pretty easy and get started all right it's already started now and then it's just a matter of cranking it down until it's all the way down and snug and it's on there nice and straight dead center just like that and that's just the way that I do it boys now y'all may have a better way or have seen a better way I never watched anybody load these things it's just the way that I do it all right let me get get a hold of this thing now this is as complicated as it is we've already got it you know got our powder all that in here now we got our slug set up make sure it bottoms out good onto your powder you shake it there's no rattle you got your powder compressed and yep roll crimp all of them if I can stay out your way where y'all can see what I'm doing here thing of beauty in it looks just like the one we shot down at the range imagine that that's exactly what it is and guys are wondering okay we've already shot this one once how would it load again I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump through some of the hoops so y'all ain't got to watch me do all of it again let's find out how that one will load a second time stand by okay boys I've already got powder installed here in the one that we shot yesterday tell you what I got this beautiful powder coated zebra boy same weight same setup let's put it in here I don't hear any rattle but I put it on my leg or on the bench and just give it a good press hit the roll crimp tool with a little petroleum jelly and let's see how it works out crimping it a second time how about that how about that? That's beautiful, ain't it? You can, in a shotgun that normally takes five rounds, guys, these right here, you can get six, maybe seven of these rounds. I've already got another 30 grains left. This once fired estate or Rio that we've already resized, reprimed. We shot it down at the range yesterday also. So let's get uh, 30 grains of long shot in it. This one here is the just big old hollow point zebra boy. Like a dream.
that's it. And you saw how hard these things hit. I mean, it bumping a thousand foot per second, an ounce and a quarter slug, segmented or hollow point is going to hit like a bleeding hammer. Great for home defense right there. Not gonna, not gonna smack you to death. And you saw they ran in my, my stoker. They ran in the auto loader. So very, very effective. And I didn't leave you guys hanging. I did show y'all how I put them things together. Hope y'all enjoyed the video guys on the Zebra Boy. We're gonna be talking about the Botfly in the next episode. And then we're gonna cover all the Paradox, the Peridot slugs that uh, I got three different pins with that Paradox that a uh, couple of different um, cavities that we got. One of them blame things weighs an ounce and a half, 1.45 ounces that those big hammers weigh. And also got the pin that does the Gualandi special wide, your special big game or dangerous game wide that they make to insert or did that slug just snaps right on the top of. Great stuff. Y'all stand by and stay tuned. Hope y'all enjoy it.